everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. Now we have uh, reached the final, the final session of the conference. Um, first, I want to make a few announcements while I'll have your attention, because afterwards nobody is going to listen to me. Mm -hmm. um, we have our Flickr pages and our Facebook pages loaded with pictures of you all. So go in there and tag yourselves. A picture from the past few days of the conference, and we'll have pictures from the party later tonight. All the sessions have been recorded, and they will all be uploaded um, both to YouTube and to the Commons within, within a couple of days. Okay, this is the buses section. It's a bit complicated. There's going to be buses directly from here to the beach at 5.15. And because the beach closes at 6, those who want to swim will need to be on that bus. There are also buses to the dorms and to Mount Carmel Hotel at the same time. From the dorms, from the Talia dorms, there's a bus at 6.45. And, and at 7 o'clock, there's a bus from Shikma Technion from Mount Carmel Hotel and from the bus station between Dan Panorama and North Hotel, all will take you to the beach. There's also a bus from here again at 6.45, taking you to the beach. You cannot enter the beach without the bracelet, so bring it with you. The tags, the conference tags are not going to be of any use there. Um, tomorrow, anybody who's going to the tour, the buses from the dorms and from the Mount Carmel Hotel, all dorms, including Shikma, will leave at 7.45. You will get here, and the buses from here to the tours leave at 8.30 exactly. So if you are in other hotels, be here before 8.15. And um, there is, will be one bus going to Jerusalem that will later go directly to the Ben Gurion airport. So if you want to go to the airport directly from Jerusalem, be on that bus with your suitcases. Now we can start the session. <laughs> um, As in the past years, the final session is always dedicated to the state of the wiki. I wish to invite to the stage the founder of Wikipedia, Jimmy Wales. Okay, great. Uh, I'm not sure I can compete with that, but I'll try. Uh, okay, so um, the first thing I wanted to talk about was, um, oh, how do I click? Ah, in a futile attempt to persuade you of my intelligence, I honestly don't... <laughs> don't. What does it say right there? Microsoft. In a futile attempt to persuade you of my intelligence, I've decided to dress like Yokai. <laughs> Only I notice he's done it a little more better than me with the rolled up sleeves and the unbuttoned. Yeah, there we go. He actually dressed the same way the last time he spoke at Wikimania, which I thought was interesting. It is actually an official Yokai Binkler costume. Is Yokai here? Oh, well, don't tell him I made these jokes. I, he won't mind. He'll love it. Okay. So, um, really, honestly, I don't know how this works. So, here's what I wanted to do uh, to kick this off. I wanted to uh, talk about, I'm, I'm going to be talking a lot about the health of our community, uh, about some of the things that I think we can do better. And to kick that off, I wanted to think about how long uh, many of us have been in the community. So what I want to do, I want everybody in the room who started editing in 2011 to stand up now. So if you started editing this year, just a couple of people. Okay. The next group. I honestly don't know how to work this thing. What button am I supposed to push? <laughs> There's buttons on the bottom. <laughs> wow. 
Gott, noch was? Presentation mode on the mouse. So while we're waiting this, I'm going to tell you another dumb story about me. When I sent my presentation up, I got a frantic phone call back, and they said, "Jimmy, did you really mean to write Wikimania 2012?" I said, "Oh no, no, it's just a typo." And they said, "Did you really mean to start the countdown of numbers from 2012?" No, I just this morning when I was finishing this up, I thought it was 2012, and in the future, mice won't work anymore. So, all right, I, you know what? I actually know what comes next. Everybody who started editing in 2010, please stand up. 2010. All right. And then 2009. Oh, we're getting into the meat of it now. 2008. Oh, now there's a big chunk of people there. 2006. 2005. Great. 2004. Woo! Now we're starting to get into some old timers here. 2003. 2002. Woo! What do we have? One, two, and finally, 2001. Uh, <laughs> amazing. So I also started editing um, in 2001, and. Let me go converse with the tech staff here. Yeah, it's clicking now. Okay. 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 Great. One minute. Two thousand one. Okay. Uh, and. <laughs> What is that spinning? Cursor of death. What is it doing? There's a spinning cursor of death. We can move. Ah, oh, well, 2001. Amir, click it where? That button. Okay. Six. Six. I want to go the backwards way. I mean, forward. Five. No, Amir, that's clicking. No, Amir, that's clicking. Amir will go next. Okay. So he'll run it for me. <laughs> Great. Anybody want to buy a mouse? Uh, 2004, 2003, 2002, 2001. Dun dun dun. Wikipedia is not dying. Um, Because this year we've turned our attention to community health, and we have some trends in the number of editors that we're interested in and, and somewhat concerned about.、Uh, of course, any time we talk about something, even in the mildest possible terms, the headlines read: "Jimmy Wales says Wikipedia is dying,"、uh, which the Italian press at least said that directly.、Um, of course, I didn't say anything like that.、Um, click, click. So I just wanted to go through some of the numbers. The number of editors with greater than five edits from some of the major Wikipedias and some of the other Wikipedias. So we'll do these slowly. So English,、uh, this is from one one year ago. So this is a one year gap. English went from thirty five thousand nine hundred seven to thirty five thousand eight hundred and forty four. It it hasn't gone up. It has gone down a little bit, but obviously no cause for immediate panic. Sixty nine hundred to sixty seven hundred. Next. 
French, 4,700 to 4,800. Very good. Um, although, if you look at these numbers, they bounce around every month, and so French is actually about the same as all of these, which is that we're more or less stable. So, summary for the largest Wikipedia is slight declines, but generally stable for the last year or two. Okay, next slide. Next item. Hebrew, 740 to 765. Woo! Um, but again, it bounces around, so we're not really sure. Hindi, 52 to 51. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Now I want a drum roll. Here we go. Drum roll. And click for the next Kazakh Wikipedia. From 15 editors to 231. Um, could the Kazakh Wikipedians that are just back here stand up? So uh, this is amazing, and I think everybody should go and take a look at what they're doing, and I'll talk about that later in my talk. Let me see if I can click. Let's just see what happens. Okay, over to you. So, so I actually don't care about contributor numbers, not directly. What I care about is contributor numbers, but only indirectly. And what I mean by that is that what I actually care about is quality. What we really care about is we're trying to create a high-quality encyclopedia for every single person on the planet in their own language. Everything that we do, including how many contributors we need, follows from that. So we're not a, you know, we're not, we're not worried, we're not... As it turns out, you guys don't pay to use Wikipedia, so we have no commercial interest in having more editors for no reason. The real question is, how many editors do we need to have quality? And nobody really knows the answer to that question. It's a complicated question. So if we go on here, I've been thinking about this a lot, and so I've broken down uh, in, into three broad categories. What are the factors that go into determining the number of contributors? And so we can just load those up one at a time. Uh, there's one that we can't change. We, meaning here, us, the community. Uh, one that the foundation can <laughs> change with our help. Uh, and then one that we can change, that's up to us in the editing community. So I'll go through each of these in turn. Now, I'm not saying these are all of the factors or anything. I'm just trying to get some broad categories so we can have a little bit better conversation about this. I find often in the community, on my user talk page, for example, when the question comes up, we get sort of responses from all three of these categories. And I think that's a little bit confusing because we need to focus on each of them separately. They are separate issues. So if we look at the first one, the one we can't change, this is the entry from the ancient archives of Wikipedia on William Shakespeare. Um, as you can see, it's very, very short. And this is today's entry on William Shakespeare. Um, and so we can go forward. Yeah, go forward one more. Uh, so what we can't change. So we can, you can just go ahead and load all these up. Wikipedia is already quite mature in the largest languages. In the past, if I went to this entry on Shakespeare when it had three sentences, I could actually help. I knew how to make that better. I could go and look up a list of his plays. I could find out when he was born. I could do this, that, and the other. Today when I look at this entry, there's nothing I can do to help. I'm not qualified to help. I don't know anything about it. In fact, the main thing I know about it is that we had an enormous arbitration committee case about the Shakespeare authorship question in English Wikipedia, which diverted, I don't know, 40 or 50,000 people to arguing uh, for a long period of time. But I'm unqualified to help with this. And so when we have this kind of reason, if people aren't editing Wikipedia because they came to Wikipedia and what they saw was really high quality and they were really satisfied and it actually had everything that they needed to know, that's okay. We don't mind. We don't need to have people editing for no apparent reason. What we care about is quality. So then if we go, this is no cause for concern. Uh, if we go on, we can think about things that the foundation can change, software issues. But I'm, when I'm separating this out from community issues, I don't mean that they're completely independent, completely separate. What I mean, uh, that the, the two parts interact. Uh, and what I mean here is that in the community, most of us who aren't programmers, uh, we can't just wish for software changes to appear. We have to ask for it, so we need to interact with the foundation. We need to wait for it, because it takes some time to program things, or we need to help write it, um, and that would go for the technical among us in the community. One of the big lessons that I want to push forward this year 
in the community is that we need to relax a little bit, not be as conservative, and allow the foundation room to experiment. If you go and read the Wikimedia Foundation blog, which I'm going to reference several times, you'll see they're putting a lot of energy into studying what's going on, editor trends, what, are, what do editors say makes them happy, not happy, things like that. And I think we need to accept that they can change the software on us, maybe not too radically, please, not all at once, but they'll make some changes and we'll tell them if we like those changes or not. If we don't like them, they can take them away. And we don't need to panic about it. We don't need to have a huge brouhaha and insist on having massive consensus for every single little change in the software. We need to recapture the spirit, the early spirit, of innovation and experimentation. Yay. Um, a lot, of the, a lot of the policies and procedures and processes that I'm going to talk about today, um, that I am going to argue we need to either abandon them or revamp them. They actually do serve some useful purpose, but I think the cost of doing them is too high when we're doing them in the manual way, and I'll give specific examples. However, some of those can be salvaged if we can think of ways to suggest to the foundation that they implement some wizards or some processes or some one-click solutions to certain problems that we have. Uh, I think that could be very useful. But this, again, is what the foundation can do. What I really want to talk about is what we can do. So what we can change. So I'm going to give, break it down into three categories, my favorite thing to do. Uh, the first is procedures that serve some purpose but are so convoluted and difficult uh, that it just isn't worth it. Okay, and I'm going, to give, I'm going to go through each of these in turn. The second one is rules that make no actual sense, but serve to discourage people from their second through 99th edit. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are aware of the general research, which I'm not going to try to state exactly because uh, I'll screw it up, but in general, the idea is the number of people making their first edit is pretty stable as a percentage of traffic. The number of people in our community like us, we aren't all quitting in droves. We attrate, you know, people do leave in sort of a normal way. But the real problem seems to be getting people from that second edit to the 99th edit. And so that's the, that's the area I want to focus on. What are we doing that's unnecessary that discourages those people? And then finally, templated warnings are too easy and praise is too hard. So, okay. So let's go through each of these with an example in each case that I think will be interesting. So, uh, first example of convoluted procedure. So we can just click here. Uh, so I do have a little bit of wiki editing experience. Uh, not nearly as much as many, many, many people in this room. Uh, but I do edit regularly. I edit not only policy pages and things like this, but I edit as an ordinary editor. And one day, I wanted to move a page. But I wanted to do it the right way. So if we click again. So, John Hutton, British Labour politician, I wanted to move it to John Hutton, Baron Hutton of Furness. Uh, this is, in the English Wikipedia, the, the custom for names of members of the House of Lords, which is what I tend to edit for just information purposes. And this is our usual naming convention. However, it's a little bit controversial. There's some struggle in the community. Is this really the right way to do it? Does it apply to everyone? When should we do it? When should we not do it? And I didn't want to get into a big fight. I didn't want to just be bold and sort of assert this on people. So I thought, I want to do it the right way. So I went to find out what you're supposed to do. So the first place I landed, of course, is the requested moves page. And this page says, basically, uh, you, you should use this for sure if you're a newbie and you don't have, you're not auto-confirmed so you actually can't move a page. Uh, you should do it if the page is protected and you can't move it. Or if you think it's controversial, it could be a good idea to use this so that there can be a discussion. I said, okay, this is perfect for me. Let's go. Like any good Wikipedian, I clicked on edit. Or no, I looked down the page to see what it did look like. And look, yeah, there's requests and discussions. And I was like, oh, perfect. So I clicked on edit. Uh, let's click here. Uh, and when I clicked on edit, I looked on the page to find where to add my discussion. And the discussions aren't there. Where are they? Oh, I remember there's this crazy template substitution thing. They're on a template somewhere, right? Okay, so I know what to do. So I went back. Scrolled down the page, found the section, and clicked on the section to edit there. So I clicked on it, and then I made my fatal error. My fatal error, because I'm an experienced Wikipedia, and I don't have to read all this blah, blah, blah at the top of the page. Like many newbies, actually. So I just scrolled past this. That this says, warning, don't edit this page, or you will be sorry. Um, and so I went down to, to the next thing, and I noticed because, well, here's some, these are from today. This is the format. It's very clean and very neat. And I thought, oh, wow, people are very neat and clean around here. So what I did is I copied one of these. And notice, actually, it was sort of amusing. This is literally today, this morning, some poor soul. Um, who is it? Marth? No, sexy. Sexy said. Um, 
I'm new to this, so I hope I do it correctly, right? So they're a little afraid. Me, I'm not afraid. I'm an experienced Wikipedian. I copied and pasted. I changed all the parameters. I changed everything to fit. And I hit save. And I thought, ah, good. I've matched the format. I did the right thing. And I hit save. And then click. You know, there's what I wrote. There's my diff, right? And what happened next? If we could just click here. So what did happen next? Click. A robot ate my homework. <laughs> I actually... I did this, and, and I went off and did something else, and I slept, and I got up many hours later, and I was all excited. I'm going to, oh, I wonder if they think that my page should be moved. And I went and clicked, and it was gone, completely gone. <laughs> and sad puppy was sad. <laughs> Jimmy Wales, the B-A-I, oh, that's really bad. Never mind that one. Um, so what is the purpose of this process on this page? So it turns out what you're supposed to do is some kind of template substitution on the talk page of the article that will magically put things in, I don't understand it even now, but I did manage to do it correctly and I'm happy to report the community agreed the page should be moved and it has been moved. So in the end there was success, but what is the purpose of this convoluted process? It seemed to me to serve no actual purpose whatsoever. The closest thing to a purpose is so that it's the discussions about where to move articles is not just focused on the talk page of that article, but you're also talking to people who are experts in moving pages, and so that's good for consistency and things like that. That's the ultimate purpose. But the template business and all that seemed to be completely hopeless. Um, what I wondered is why, why when I went to request a move page, why couldn't I just click on that page and type, hey, is it okay if I move this page? And then people would say, well, let's have a discussion about it. That's the way we used to do it in 2001, 2002. And it was a much more human process. Now think about if you are a brand new editor, you've just made your fourth or fifth edit, and you think, oh, right, I'm, I want to move this page. This doesn't seem to be the right title, but I've seen these discussions, and they're in a kind of a fancy format. I'm supposed to do uh, a move request, so I'll go to do that. And, you know, I know about templates a little bit, and I can do this sort of thing a little bit, and it still was a nightmare for me, and a robot ate my homework. So, if, if I don't even know the right way to prose a page to be renamed, which is one of the basic good faith things people might want to do, then we've got a real problem. So, click. As somebody said on my talk page today, this is not so much WYSIWYG as WTF. Um, what is this? Okay. So, uh, let's go on. So, the design principle here, one design principle that I have in mind for, for this is, you shouldn't allow users to do something that they aren't allowed to do. Um, if you really pause to reflect on that, we have a lot of cases where we allow people to do things that seem perfectly normal to them that they get in trouble for or that a robot comes and eats, and I think that's a big mistake. If you think about Facebook as an example, and I, uh, don't be afraid, I'm not suggesting we should become in every way like Facebook, but one of the great things about Facebook, if, if you've got pictures up, you've got pictures up, you've got pictures up, and you each have different permissions of what I'm allowed to comment on or not, Here's what doesn't happen at Facebook. I don't go to uh, Itzik's page in Facebook, leave a comment on a photo, and then five minutes later a robot yells at me that I'm not supposed to do that. Instead, if I go there, I just can't do it, right? If I'm not allowed to do it, I'm just not allowed to do it. Now, if we look a little deeper though, but the wiki solution is generally to allow users to do things. So I'm not suggesting that we redesign the system to not let people do all these things. It's more, I think we need to redesign our social systems to really rethink, why in the hell can't I just edit a page and say, can I move this please? And why do we make people, particularly newbies, go through this convoluted procedure? So what we need to do is get our system out of the way, not only the software, but our social system out of people's way when they're trying to do good faith work. So now we'll go to the next uh, thing here, uh, which is discouraging rules. Uh, this second example was just uh, told to me within the last 24 hours. Uh, if we click. And for fun, I'm going to pick on our excellent hosts, the Hebrew Wikipedia. Oh, and I, th before I pick on the hosts, don't click just yet, I wanted to praise them for putting together such an amazing conference. Who would have thought? <laughs> Who would have thought? that for the opening speech, they would have been able to get, click, they would have been able to get William Shatner <laughs> as the opening speaker. It's incredible. It's never occurred to me. It, uh, brilliant, well done, well done. I, I think we should get Leonard Nimoy next year. Um, okay. 
Uh, so here's a discussion of uh, Daphne Leaf. Daphne Leaf is, is an activist who's become a little bit well-known here in Israel. She's the one who started the whole tent protest thing. And so there's a page about her in Wikipedia, and there's a deletion discussion. Uh, and Odit, uh, who is here uh, in the conference, and is a very new wiki editor with uh, maybe 10 or 15 edits, uh, she thought she would vote to delete, and she gave some reason. And then we click. Uh, and then this is the next thing that happened. This is what the robot uh, gave her. Uh, this is the English translation according to uh, Google, so it's a bit sketchy. Uh, but the important thing to know is she voted, she voted to delete, and then within a few minutes she got an angry message uh, that said, sorry, I had to remove your vote. And the rule in, uh, apparently, if I understand this, and, and I think I've got it right, is that in Hebrew Wikipedia you have to have an account for at least 30 days, and you have to have at least 100 edits in the last 90 days before you can vote to delete or vote at all in an election. Uh, in a um, articles for deletion. So if we click here, this is what a new editor experienced. Um, and one of the interesting things to look at, and uh, I think, I, no, no offense against Asayas, who's probably a wonderful editor, Asayas didn't leave a reason at all, which is fine sometimes. It's not the best practice, but it's okay, right? Didn't leave a reason, and then here's someone who did leave a reason, and so what she feels like is, how come this person, who's obviously important, doesn't even have to give a reason? And I give a reason, which you might not agree with or not. A sad kitty. Oh, there is a reason, I'm sorry. I can't read Hebrew very well. It's okay, it's okay. A minor point, a minor point. Uh, the, the, the real point is, the user felt like, hey, I, I gave a reason. It might not have been the best reason. It might have been a good reason. It seemed like a sensible reason, and yet all I got was rejected. And I think that's unfortunate if we don't allow new users to participate. And, I, uh, and so we have a sad kitten. Odi, it's a sad kitten. Okay, so if we go on to the next thing, uh, what is the purpose of these rules? So in this case, what is the purpose? There is actually a purpose. There, there are several purposes, but some of the main ones, we don't like vote stacking called on by bloggers. This happens all the time. Some blogger says, this page is horrifying. I call on everyone to come and vote to delete it. Or this is the greatest page in the history of the world. Everybody should go to save it because the evil Wikipedians are going to delete it. And we all think, okay, that's not really the best way to do it. The other thing we don't like, if we click, is votes that make no sense. People may come in and vote and say, I hate this person, delete the article. And we all know that's not a valid reason to delete something from Wikipedia. There's lots of reasons people might give that aren't valid. So we want to prevent these two things. But what I ask is, this example shows that the current policy isn't really working. It costs us good contributors. Instead of excluding these two things and things like it, we're just excluding a good faith person who said, hey, I think this should be deleted, and here's my reason. Uh, this hasn't received enough press coverage or something like this. So what I think we should do in cases like this is re-examine our policy and say, look, here's a policy for, that for new users who have not been registered for 30 days and who don't have 100 edits in the last 90 days, that they find off-putting and, and they aren't doing it. I think the solution, or some partial solutions, if we go to the next slide, is uh, administrator judgment can be discrete. One of the things is, as we all know, these kinds of votes are not supposed to be real votes. They're really supposed to be a discussion where we weigh up the, the sense of the community, and we don't necessarily have to count votes. In this particular case, the vote, uh, the last I looked, was like 40 to 30. So it's still it's in favor of deletion by a slight margin. Administrative judgment can be deleted. When you, when you go to close it, you can look at the votes and you can say, oh, actually, this is a stupid reason, so I'm kind of going to ignore that vote, or I'm going to count it less, or this is a very new user, or here's 18 votes that all are from red-linked users who just showed up and edited for the first time. That's probably not really participating in the discussion. And you could do that without yelling at the people involved. You don't have to go and tell them, actually, I thought your vote was stupid, so I didn't count it. Um, and I think that's important, that there's no reason in many cases to go and tell somebody to not do something. And again, we see the design principle of, if I'm not allowed to vote, why did you let me vote in the first place. Maybe if I went to that page and there was no place for me to click edit, then I might feel like, oh, okay, well, I guess I'm not allowed yet. Uh, let's keep going here. You can thank the user for their vote, to say, hey, thanks for your vote. That's all. You don't have to tell them, thanks for your vote, but I deleted it. <laughs> you can say, thanks for your vote. Uh, we'll take it into consideration, but do keep in mind uh, that it's not really a vote, it's a discussion, and um, you know, we're going we're gonna to see what we're going to do. And you can count the vote if it's rational, no matter who makes it. 
Uh, if the vote actually makes sense, if it's a good reason, there's no reason to exclude someone, even if they're just getting started in Wikipedia. Uh, in the old days, when we first started Wikipedia, we didn't even have any votes or rules or anything. We had the general idea that you try really hard to get the best work out of people. When they come in, you say, hey, this is a good faith person. They're trying to do something useful. Let's try to help them do more of that, and let's not give them any bad feelings um, off. So, if we go on here. Um, so make smart, good people feel involved and not re rejected. And we can go to the next slide. This is an intermission for fun. One of the great things about Wikimania is that we get to visit all different places around the world and we learn about local cultures, local politics, and things like this. If you click, um, so what are all these tent protests all about? That's a question that I came, you know, I showed up and there's all these tents around here and I saw in the news lots of tents. Uh, if we click here, we can see. So here's a picture I found of the tent protest. And fortunately, I used GIMP because I can't quite read the signs, and I thought I saw one in English way back in the back. And so I zoomed in to see what it says. Oh, I see. <laughs> now I know what they're protesting. They want a free encyclopedia, of course. Okay. That was a really bad joke. Okay. So then the last of the three topics I'm going to talk about is that warning people is too easy. Here's a blog post, uh, no need to copy down the URL. In fact, just go to the Wikimedia blog, there's a whole series of posts um, about research that the foundation has done into all kinds of different things. And if we click here, this is praise versus negative tone. This is a study of the first comment that people get the first time when they're editing Wikipedia. What is the first edit to their talk page? And notice a couple of details about this. This is praise, which sadly has come down since 2004. Uh, and this is templates with a negative tone, which has come way up. And keep in mind, there's a lot of the templates that they excluded. So for example, they excluded from this, they excluded uh, people who got banned eventually as sock uh, vandals or sock puppets. So we're trying to say, this isn't just about loads and loads of vandals. This is people who survived to some extent. They didn't get banned as Wikipedians. They may have never come back after they got a nasty letter on their talk page. And it's also templates we're counting. So why did this happen? So let's, let's think about why this has happened. If we go to the next slide, uh, why might this be? So first reason, uh, maybe we think new users aren't as good as they used to be. Maybe Wikipedia has gotten so popular that when we were in the old days, we were all very geeky and only geeky people came to Wikipedia and they were all really smart and we had all good users coming in and now the general public is here and they're really stupid and extremely annoying. But it turns out that the evidence says no. The ratio of good new user contributions today is actually better than two years ago. Uh, it may have declined some since the very early days, but it's still something like 75% according to what we found in the study. And you can criticize their methodology, but I think the numbers are so strong, 75%, uh, that you kind of say, no, it, this isn't really about a bunch of idiots coming to Wikipedia. If we go to the next one, uh, are we intentionally closed to newcomers now? Are we too clubby? Do we, we sit around saying, oh, we don't want new people? My discussions with Wikipedia suggest not. When I talk to people like you, nobody out here is saying, oh, I don't want any good new users. Well, one. Okay, one guy says, I don't want anybody good to come to Wikipedia anymore. Oh, he's the new guy. Okay. Um, so, oh, so he says it. he thinks we are too clubby, right? And what's interesting about that is it's experienced by lots of people. Lots of people say, I wanted to edit Wikipedia, but it seems I don't know how to get involved. It seems very clubby and closed. My feeling is this community, you've been here for three days. They don't really have that attitude. They don't, they're not trying to be that way. Uh, and so I think this third reason is actually one of the ones that we should really focus on is that our tools are pushing us to bad behaviors. And so I want to go next to the next slide here, uh, which is, oh, there's something in parenthetical, but I don't remember what it was, so good thing we'll skip it. So we'll go to the example. Uh, I, like many users of Wikipedia, click, I use Twinkle, like thousands of people. How many people here use Twinkle in my database? It's a fair number, not everybody. I don't know if it's a, is, you don't have it in all languages, so okay. So this may be a slightly English skewed or maybe European language skewed discussion, but if we go here, let's take a look at what it encourages. So what Twinkle is, it's a gadget you can turn on and it gives you an extra menu that allows you to do some things with one click. So here's the things you can do. We'll just go through these pretty quickly. The first thing you can do is report somebody for vandalism. The next thing, warn the user. You can welcome the user. That's good. Talk back template. Tag their page for CD deletion. That's a lovely way to greet people. Or you can you know, nominate them from a deletion debate because there's nothing more enjoyable as a user than having a debate about whether you should be deleted. You can protect their page. That'll stop them. Um, and you can delete all the files found on their page. You can do this as a batch and, and so on. So 
Most of these things are negative. If we click forward, uh, most of these are negative actions. And so my feeling is this tool, which is, by the way, a fabulous tool which you should use uh, if you can, but the tool, unfortunately, uh, has focused on doing lots of things that are negative. It's helping people do things that are negative. And even some of the ones that seem neutral aren't that friendly. So I'm going to give one example here, if we click forward. Talk back. Okay, so what the talk like does, it leaves a templated message that says, hello, so-and-so, uh, you have new messages at so-and-so's talk page. You can remove this notice at any time by removing the talk back or TV template. So with one click, I can add this to a new user's page, and they read this. I have an easy one-click way to do something that a newbie finds completely baffling. Right? Imagine that you've never been to Wikipedia before. You've just made two or three edits. Somebody says, Maybe you go ask somebody a question and I answer it and I also leave a talk back message. And you tell me, the first thing I, I, I hear is something with curly braces and talk back, like what the hell is that? So this is an example of a need for a modern UI. For a lot of the things that we're doing, we're really, really, really out of date. And so again, think about the Facebook wall. Think about how Facebook does this. If I want to leave you a message at Facebook, I just leave you a message and I can see it and you can see it. If you want to get rid of it, you don't have to go, you know, Facebook doesn't say, if you want to remove this message, Click at it and remove the bracket, bracket, TB, bracket, bracket. <laughs> you just click the little X and it's gone, right? And so this is an example of a tool that even the neutral parts of the tool for a new user are completely baffling. Also, by the way, most new users have no clue whatsoever that this tool exists. They think that all of you are absolute geniuses and you've memorized all these template names, which many of you probably have. Um, <laughs> And so they just think, wow, like this seems really hard. Like all I wanted to do was be, you know, all I got was a notification that somebody said something to me and now I have to learn about templates. I don't really understand why I have to do that. So I think what I'm asking for here is that we go through all of our procedures from the viewpoint of the sincere, eager newcomer who has a handful of good faith edits. Yay. So in the community, there's not a lot that we can do to control who clicks at it for the first time. That, I think, has to do with uh, whether they found something interesting that they wanted to edit, and that's a, that's a bit of a bigger question. The only thing we could do uh, would be to uh, randomly delete articles like Shakespeare, so people would go, wow, they don't have an article about Shakespeare. I think I'll write that now. <laughs> Probably not the best approach, right? Um, although I've often thought that for our 10th anniversary on April Fool's Day, we should have just put up a notice saying, that was fun, let's do it again. We deleted the whole site. Um, Maybe not the best thing. Uh, but what we can do, when we think about once that person has clicked at it and we see that there's a good faith edit, we need to think about what do we do with that person? How do we treat them? And that involves several things. It not only involves, and this is the important bit, it not only involves us being nice to them, which I think we generally are. Uh, when you get Wikipedians, when you get real messages left, they're not really brutal and horrible. But they are often semi-automated. They are often cryptic. They are often very hard to understand if you don't know the software. Uh, so we need to simplify procedures. So for example, the move page procedure, I think, uh, and I'm going to campaign, that that should just be a page where I can say, hey, I'd like to discuss moving this page, and, and I don't have to do a template to do it. We can eliminate some procedures completely, um, and, and that in particular would be like the move page. All that whole template business, I just see no purpose in it. We should just eliminate it, even if we imagine that some of what it's doing is actually valuable. That's a spot where we should say, actually, maybe there should be a button that when you click move, that, the pers that it says, hey, do you think this might be controversial? Yes. Thank you. We've re made the request for you and everything's done. Right? That's something the foundation can do. That's something that maybe we can help them design because often the programmers at the foundation really need feedback about things like this. And so I want us to give feedback and all of us to review the processes and think about it from that second through 99th editor to say what are the things that we're doing that we could ask the foundation to fix, what can we fix ourselves, simplify, eliminate, and finally automate. That, so that's the last bit that I was just saying. We, some of these we can ask the foundation to help us automate. Uh, so in closing, uh, and I'm actually going to come over and run the computer now because I want to really control the timing here. Uh, what I'm going to announce right now is unknown to anybody except the few people who looked through my slides before I put them up. Uh, I'm announcing today an annual award, probably annual if I remember next year. Um, and the title of the award is Global Wikipedian of the Year given by me personally, 
in my opinion, and later, of course, like everything that started out, me personally, in my opinion, we'll find a process in the future to have this be community organized. Uh, and this year, uh, the winner is Ruin of Kazakh Wikipedia. So Ruin, if you could come down, maybe it's too hard to come down. Maybe you'll just stay there. So I've been following the story of Kazakh Wikipedia uh, since uh, Tang went to Kazakhstan and he came back and he reported on something amazing that was happening there. And I started to get in touch with them. I also have been getting in touch uh, with the government there. I've been uh, talking to the prime minister there. Uh, the prize of this, uh, it's a two-part prize. Uh, the first part is a $5,000 donation from me personally to Wikibillum. Is that, did I spell it right? Wikibillum. Uh, is, that, is that the correct name? I spelled it right? Yeah, Wikibillum. Uh, Wikibillum is their pre-chapter. Uh, it's the organization they formed to do this, and they're applying for chapter status, and uh, I assume they're just working through the process there. Uh, and this is specifically to cover travel expenses to a conference that he told me they're hoping to have next year, where they're going to bring people from the neighboring countries, in particular, uh, who have a similar type of situation uh, for a regional conference to explain the success that they've had in their community. Now, keep in mind, they've gone from, uh, well, I said the numbers earlier, from, you know, 20 to 260, 163? Some, a few, to a bunch. Um, and that's what we all want. Uh, and we're also, I'm going to go, uh, I'll be there, I'm going in uh, December, and I'm going to give the award in the presence of the Prime Minister to Rowan. Pending scheduling, Prime Ministers are always hard to nail down, but uh, they've agreed to the meeting. Um, and I think that if we think about the things that they're doing, think about the things that I've talked about, uh, I think if we really try hard on this, instead of having sad puppies and sad kittens, we'll have happy puppies and kittens. Yeah. And that is it. Let's go to the beach. Uh, you don't get, get oh. off the hook so quick. We have time oh. for a brief Q&A. Okay, Q&A. Why not? Don't go to the beach. <laughs> Nothing at the beach. Yeah, we can... We have time for four questions. Um, we'll start yeah. with Mike. I'm kind of afraid this dog is going to bite me, so if we could <laughs> maybe move to something else. Great. Question. Do you know what day tomorrow is? <laughs> My birthday! <laughs> Hilarious. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Brilliant. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. That was completely unplanned, I'm sure. Brilliant. Okay, thank you. Uh, it was unplanned. Wow. Brilliant. Um, are we really having Q&A now? Or? Yeah, we have time for a few questions. Three questions. Here, right here. My question. You were talking about Wikilaf and other things like that. You were talking about Wikilaf and other things like that. But the problem is a lot of our users and administrators we faced are in fact jerks with no sense of humor mm -hmm. and who were talking to the wiki labs and saying, oh please don't enable this, that's horrible, no love please. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know what to say. Um, <laughs> I like puppies and kittens myself. No, so I will actually say, when the Wikilove thing first debuted, 
Um, I wanted to use it myself just to test it out. And I, when I went and I clicked on it and I saw my options were things like puppies and kittens, and I was like, really? Am I going to do this? But fortunately, there was one that was more serious. Uh, and, and so here's my experience of using it. I thought, well, who should I thank for this? And I thought, well, as I edit, as I showed you, it's all about moving pages. And there's this one guy who disagrees with me about when we should move these pages. And we always have these discussions. We've been having these discussions for two years, a whole bunch of other people. It's very peaceful. We're very sort of civilized about it. And I thought, you know, we've had this running debate for two or three years now about naming conventions for UK peers which, as you all know, is the most important thing in the world. <laughs> um, and I thought, we've had a lot of disagreements, but it's always been very civil, and he gives, you know, sensible arguments. He's wrong, of course, but, um, but he gives sensible arguments, and maybe he's right a little bit now and then, and so I thought, I'll thank him for that. And so I thanked him, and then he said something like, wow, I thought this wiki love thing was really stupid, but then I got to thank you from the man himself. That was really nice. And I thought, oh, okay, great, it works, right? And so part of this is, even if we don't like the tool itself, right, even if we think, actually, we, it's a little bit too puppies and kittens for us, the idea of it seems to be right, and the, and the deeper idea is, if the software, and this is sort of the point of my talk in many parts, if the software is driving us to treat each other poorly, um, if we don't have things in place that help us treat each other better, uh, we've got a problem. And so the software should try to offer us opportunities, affordances, to do the right thing to people. Uh, I don't, I'm not a big fan of the Facebook like button, but that kind of thing, it does, it does, it's a quick and easy way for people to show appreciation and encourages people to show appreciation, which is kind of nice. And I think we should have more things like that. And I think, again, my big point about this is Instead of people getting really riled up against Wikilove, which only a few people have, but you know, some people get really riled up about it, and say, look, you know, actually foundation, kind of cute, but could you fix it in this way, and let's have a discussion about it, and they will. And so I think that sort of sense of trust that we need to regain about the software development and about experimenting is, is really key. Okay? One more question. As we are attempting to encourage female participation in Wikipedia, I request a female question. There we go. Yay! Yay! Yes. So I will, I will repeat this. Uh, so it's a question and a request for the entire audience. Um, if you know people throughout the software industry, or if you yourself are using MediaWiki, and you have suggestions, requests, even better code to contribute, um, talk to her. And, the, and your email address is? S-U-M-A-N-A, -A, first results on major search engines, and a few minor ones. Okay, great, super. Okay. Okay, we don't have time for more questions, but can you just stay on stage a minute? Okay, please? thank you. Sue, can you also come up on stage? Please? Sue? Sue, the executive director of the foundation. Um, we want to give you a gift. The Israeli Postal Authority has prepared a special stamped um, page um, to celebrate Wikipedia's 10th anniversary. <gasps> and they also did a first day stamp for, to celebrate Wikimania. And they stamped it on the first day. And we want to give it to the foundation as a present. Lovely. Wow. The, 
This is the first ever postal item regarding Wikipedia in the world. Brilliant. Drop it. I know we're going to drop it. Yes. Is it the right one? Oh, it's a nice certificate and everything. Wow. Brilliant. It's written here. The, the explanation is written here in, in Hebrew, English, and Arabic. So it's great. Okay, and now I wish to invite, to invite the 2012 team to show us the presentation. Yeah. Woo! Good afternoon, everyone. Just give me a minute, please. First, I'd like to mention that the timing of this is absolutely serendipitous, because you know that robot that ate Jimbo's homework? I programmed and deployed that robot. <laughs> Anyways, thank you to Wikimedia Israel and the 2011 Wikimania organizing team for a fabulous conference. We have the, yes, she's part of the team too. Come up, come up, come up. Audience is waiting. Anyways, we have the honor of hosting Wikimania 2012 and are delighted to welcome Wikimania back to North America for the first time since 2006. Washington, D.C., as you may know, is the capital of the United States. Yet also, Washington is the host to embassies from every corner of the globe. While it is the hub of politics, it is also a center of culture. It is the home to the Smithsonian Institution, which operates many museums, and all open to the general public free of cost. We are also home to the National Archives, the official record keeper of the United States. We are home to many innovative private businesses such as Living Social and centers of science such as the National Institutes of Health and NASA. But, <laughs> but most importantly, how did we all get there? Most people who live in Washington weren't born there and didn't grow up there, yet we all come to Washington for some purpose whether to learn at one of our several institutions of higher learning, to curate at one of our numerous museums, or to serve as a representative of the United States to the rest of the world. Just like Wikimedia, we come to Washington to make the world a better place, or just to do something cool and exciting. <laughs> As an international city, we are excited to bring Wikimedians together from North America and around the world at Georgetown University, one of the most prestigious institutions of learning in the world. <laughs> Washington regularly welcomes large conferences as well as official foreign delegations, and our community is largely and safe and friendly to visitors. With Georgetown University ranked at the top of the Wikimedia Public Policy Initiative Leaderboard, There is a great deal of understanding and appreciation for Wikipedia, as well as considerable potential for continued outreach on campus. In addition, there are strong ties between the university and the local Wikimedia volunteer community. And finally, there are lots of lounge spaces and power outlets. Woo! It's a beautiful campus in a very safe, friendly neighborhood with an easy walk to shops and restaurants, nearby hotels, and a short bus ride to ma major national landmarks. <laughs> our community is working closely with, cult with our cultural and higher education institutions to engage participants beyond the immediate venue of our conference. You've all met and been impressed by our Wikipedians in residence all around the world. The Smithsonian and National Archives have welcomed them, and you'll be welcome here too. This is also an opportunity to explore Washington. We have amazing <laughs> restaurants, parks, universities, libraries, museums, and shopping. And many of those activities are free. 
for the public transportation enthusiasts, you can also check out the DC Metro, and you may even consider a trip. Someone here likes Metro. And you may even consider traveling to DC by Amtrak from New York. <laughs> Unique to Wikimania 2012 will be the unconference day after the main conference where you can create your own program and expand discussions that started earlier during the conference. Additionally, we're planning outings to see DC landmarks like monuments, libraries, museums, and other attractions. Some of these are behind the scenes opportunities to visit places that tourists normally don't see. At this year's Wikimania, we have been closely engaged with the attendees both in person and online. We are soliciting feedback through the Wikimania 2011 wiki, that's wikimania2011.wikimedia.org slash wiki slash feedback, if I remember correctly, <laughs> through the wiki so that we know how to improve the conference for next year. And we have also been keeping track of our Twitter account, Wikimania2012, where people have been asking us to do something different for next year. We will continue to listen, so send us your feedback. We're, we're very excited to welcome you to Washington, D.C. in 2012 and look forward to sharing with you our culture, history, and warm hospitality. Thank you for giving us your confidence, and we'll see you in Washington. Thank you. Thank you for the 2012 team. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Dero. I was the general manager of this conference. I want to give a final personal note. Um, you may not know this, but uh, uh, I grew up here in Haifa. Um, to be more specific, I grew up in the first street next to the auditorium. Um, and when I was a child, I always used to play in the gardens that we had the cocktail on first day. Uh, there was a big bench that was my castle, and I always used to play on it. Um, my grandmother used to bring me food down to my castle because I refused to go up to the house. Um, and it's truly great for me to have been able to show you the wonderful place I grew up in. Fellow uh, Wikipedians, um, you may not know this, but when I wrote the bid, uh, I never expected to win. <laughs> I was completely sure we were going to lose and that the other bids were much, much better. And we were supposed to try again the next year. Amazingly enough, we did win and the journey began. It was a year and a half journey and now we're here. Um, we worked over, very hard over the past year and a half to produce the event. And I hope you have enjoyed the conference and that you have learned. I wish to thank, first of all, the sponsors, without which this, all of this would not have been possible. Uh, the hosting city, the municipality of Haifa, and especially the mayor, Yona Yahav. <laughs> the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Answers.com, Ask.com, and the Israeli Internet Association. The Tiltan College, who gave us the roof. Um, Babylon, the Sagi Center, and the Hebrew University, and of course, the Wikimedia Foundation. And all the chapters who gave the scholarships for people to come here. Uh, I wish to thank uh, several people without whom none of this would ever have happened. Um, first, two people, 
Itzik Adri. He, he, told me to, he told me to do the bid, to file the bid, and he was in charge of all the publicity and actually of all the production of this conference. Tomer Ashur, the chairman of Wikimedia Israel. Mighty. He handled all the logistics of this huge conference and did an amazing job to make sure everything works. Amir Aroni and Harel Kane, who make sure that people got the visas to come here. They also handled the complicated registration. Um, the program team. And the scholarship team who chose all the scholarship recipients. And the volunteers who worked hard over the past year and a half, Asaf Bartov, Rotem Simcha, Dror Kamir, Hannah Yariv, Liron Dorfman, Shaya Kir, Danny Wax, and Manuel Schneider. Danny B from Czechia. I would, like to, I would like to thank all the other volunteers, more than 30 of them, who helped us for the past three days. Okay, all of you come here. Yes. Okay. Guys, we, these are the people who made everything run so smoothly. Smoothly, sorry. We don't have stage workers. These are the guys who move the tables every morning, set everything in place, and made everything work. Um, okay, I also wish to thank the catering team for the great food. Oh. I wish to thank the photographers, all of them. Simol, it's the sound and screening company. Benny Moran, Hadas, and Ruti, who helped produce, us, produce this event, and especially Ziv, the technical manager, who did all the crazy things we asked him to do. And last, I want to thank Ethos and the auditorium and Beth Hecht Cruz, who let us do whatever we wanted in the venue. <laughs> Truly last, thanks to Dror, the steam engine of this convention.
Thank you. Um, in Gdansk, I did a presentation like the Wikimania 2012 team, and I promised you some beach time. So I want you to keep the schedule and give you that fulfill this promise. First, we must do the annual wiki picture. It will take place in the garden. So everybody, please go to the garden where we had the cocktail. I was, was asked to tell you to arrange yourself in five lines. I don't know how we're going to do that. We'll see that when we get there. <laughs> so everybody to the garden for the annual picture, and then the beach 